Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the charming Gilbert and Sullivan comic opera, The Pirates of Penzance, starring Gordon McRae and his two guest stars, Clark Dennis and Lucille Norman. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads. The same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marvin Miller, and a good, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, sir... We're off to that delightful world of nonsense and charming improbability that was fashioned by Gilbert and Sullivan. I'll be the very model of a modern major general. Clark Dennis will be Frederick, and lovely Lucille Norman will be Mabel, as we bring you the Pirates of Penzance. to be a pirate? Well, I have. Quite confidentially, just between you and me, I often lock myself in my study, pull out a wooden cutlass, and sing a rousing pirate song. Oh, better far to live and die Under the brave black flag I fly Than play a sanctimonious part With a pirate head and a pirate heart Away to the cheating world go you But I'll be true to the song I sing And live and die A pirate king For I am a pirate king And it is, it is a glorious thing To be a pirate king For I am a pirate king And it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. It is for the pirate king, for the pirate king. Oh, alas, I am no pirate king. I'm a major general, a paragon of respectability, and the father of eight daughters, all girls. Meanwhile, off on the rocky coast of Cornwall, some real pirates are having a high old time. One rocky coast of Cornwall, please. Thank you. And now let's hear from a real pirate king. Coral king, the pirate, Jerry Bill, oh, king, the pirate, Bill. Rises from indenture fleet, strong his arm and keen, he says it is a pirate now indeed. Tonight you will be 21 and a full-fledged member of the Pirates of Penzance. Pirate King, I thank you. But today I leave you forever. But why? A keener hand never scuttled a canard or shipped a hand spike, whatever that means. I was apprenticed to you, and it was my duty to stay, because I am a slave of duty. But it was all an error. An error? What error? I cannot tell you. It would reflect on my nerves. Nay, dear master, better have it out at once. When Frederick was a little lad, he proved so brave and daring. 
the father thought he'd sent his him to some career deep bearing. I was the last his nursery maid, and so it fell to my lot to take and bind the promising boy apprentice to a pilot. A life not bad for a hardy lad, so surely not a high lot. So I'm a nerd, you could do worse than make your boy a pilot. I was a stupid nursery maid on breakers, always steering. And I did not catch the word aright through being hard of hearing. Mistaking my instructions, which within my brain did gyrate. I took and bound this promising boy, apprentice to a pirate. A sad mistake it was to make, and doomed him to a fire lock. I bound him to a pirate, to you instead of to a pilot. Oh, pardon me, Frederick, but the two words were so much alike. They still are, but at midnight, my obligation ceases. I must say we haven't much to offer, Fred. We don't seem to make piracy pay. I'm sure I don't know why. It's because you're too tender-hearted. For instance, you make a point of never attacking a weaker party than yourselves, and when you attack a stronger party... We always get thrashed. <laughs> then again, you make a point of never molesting an orphan. Of course! We are orphans ourselves. Yes, but it's gotten around. Now everyone we capture says he's an orphan. The last three ships we took were manned entirely by orphans, so we had to let them go. And all, I don't think much of our profession either. But contrasted with respectability, it's um, comparatively honest. <laughs> Meanwhile, my eminence, the very model of a modern major general, accompanied by all eight of my daughters, were off for a picnic. Where? The rocky coast of Cornwall. Oh, beautiful, blue, the sky, the glass is rising, very high, continue, find a hope that they and never rain, but yesterday, tomorrow, is the Oh, Father, I just know something exciting is going to happen. Well, it always does about this point in a comic opera. Why don't you girls run down to the seashore and go waiting? We will, Father. It's such a beautiful day. Shoes off, girls. Stop, ladies, stop. Don't remove another shoe. Oh, man. Who are you, sir? Alas, I am a pirate. A pirate? Oh, oh. Ladies, ladies, don't be afraid of me. Tonight I am renouncing my profession. Oh, how wonderful it is to see you. Up until now, the only woman I have known is my nursemaid. And so I thought all women looked 47. How handsome he is. And how pitiful his story. Oh, is there not one maiden breath which does not feel the moral beauty of making worldly interest subordinate to sense of duty to such an one, if such there be, I swear by heaven's arch above you, if you your eyes on me, however plain you be, I love you, however plain you be, if you will cast your eyes
please wait. I suddenly remembered those other pirates. They are not renouncing their profession. They will seize you. A lovely idea. Seize one each, men. <laughs> so we can all be married. A doctor of divinity resides in this vicinity. Wait. There is something I want you to know. Our father is a major general and in charge of the national police. Hmm. A, a major general? Yes, gentlemen. Permit me to introduce myself. I am the very model of a modern major general. I've information, vegetable, animal, and mineral. I know the kings of England, and I quote the price historical for marathon to Waterloo and order categorical. I'm very well acquainted, too, with matters mathematical. I understand equations both the simple and quadratical. A pop no milk theorem, I'm teeming with a lot of views. Now, let's see. What rhymes with news? News? Blues? Baby needs a new pair of shoes? <laughs> And, uh, oh, I have it. With many cheerful facts about the spread of the hot hot news. Many cheerful facts about the spread of the hot hot news. Many cheerful facts about the spread of the hot hot news. Many cheerful facts about the spread of the hot hot news. Very good at integral and differential calculus. I know the scientific names of Pam, the very model of a modern major general. I know our mythic history, reeking authors, and saccadox. I answer hard acrostics, have a pretty taste for paradox. I quote an early jigs, all the crimes of heliogabalus. Conics, I can floor peculiarities, but abulous. I can tell a dot of rapey else from Jared Dawson's offices. I know the croaking chorus from the frogs of Aristophanes. Then I can hum a fugue of which I've heard the music's dinner for. Huh. What do we have now? Four, nor, dinosaur. Oh, I have it. And whistle all the airs from that infernal monster's pinafore. And whistle all the airs from that infernal monster's pinafore. And whistle all the airs from that infernal monster's pinafore. And whistle all the airs from that infernal monster's pinafore. And whistle all the airs from that infernal monster's pinafore. And whistle all the airs from that infernal monster's pinafore. And whistle all the airs from that infernal monster's pinafore. And whistle all the airs from that infernal monster's pinafore. And whistle all the airs from that infernal monster's pinafore. And whistle all the airs from that infernal monster's pinafore. And whistle all the airs from that infernal monster's pinafore. And whistle all the airs from that infernal monster's pinafore. And whistle all the airs from that infernal monster's pinafore. And whistle all the airs from that infernal monster's pinafore. And whistle all the airs from that infernal monster's pinafore. And whistle all the airs from that infernal monster's pinafore. And whistle all the airs from that infernal monster's pinafore. And whistle all the airs from that infernal monster's pinafore. And whistle all the airs from that infernal monster's pinafore. And now that I've introduced myself, I should like to have some idea of what's going on. Very simple. We propose to marry your daughters. Against our will, Papa. Against our will. You mustn't do that. May I ask? This is a picturesque uniform, but I'm not entirely familiar with it. What are you? We are all single gentlemen. Yes, I gathered that. Hmm. Papa, they are pirates. The famous pirates of Finzac. Now, wait a minute. I object to pirates as sons-in-law. Mm, and we object to major generals uh, as the fathers-in-law. Ah, an idea. Gentlemen, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? Oh, dash it all. Here we go again. <laughs> Gentlemen, I am an orphan boy. Then our rules protect you. You may be an honorary member of our band. <laughs> Oh, dear. What do you suppose they'll do when they find out? I'm the only orphan in the British Empire who still has a mother and a father. Second act of Pirates of Penzance in just a moment. At this time of national crisis, Americans remember that this is not the first Christmas season during which our country has faced a grim and trying future. 173 years ago, General Washington's army encamped at Valley Forge lacked food and fuel and arms and clothing. Lacked almost everything but tremendous spiritual courage and a strong faith in the righteousness of their cause. And that strong faith in the new ideals of liberty and freedom of opportunity inspired our young nation to win through to final victory. Today, with Christmas only two short weeks away, our country faces another sobering crisis. And as we make our Christmas preparations, we cannot help thinking of the many thousands of heroic men in our armed forces who will not spend Christmas Day with their families. Men who will spend this important season on the frozen, snow-covered battlefields of Korea fighting to preserve the same ideals of freedom and liberty that fired the souls of Washington's army in that winter at Valley Forge. 
And today, thinking of these men of our armed forces, we know all America is determined that they shall not want for anything we can give them that will strengthen them in their valiant fight against overwhelming odds. The railroads of America are deeply dedicated to the achievement of this goal. They are making full use of all the improvements to their plant and equipment installed since the end of World War II. Since the start of the Korean War, the railroads have greatly expanded and speeded up their program to meet the ever-mounting transportation demands of the country. And for the future, they are determined to provide every rail transportation need of our armed forces, first, fully, and without delay. And starring Gordon McRae as the Major General, Lucille Norman as Mabel. Frederick, help me. My poor father is so sad, so unhappy. Major General Stanley, tell me, why do you sigh? My boy, I have escaped from the pirates by lying to them. And when they find out, what will they do? It is midnight, and I am no longer a... The 21st birthday has arrived. I am free to join you as we march against the pirates of Penzance. Are not your national police here to help protect you? Oh, they are indeed. I shall call them. You know in America they have an expression for this. All right, Louis. Drop the gun. <laughs> when the foreman bears his steel... <laughs> Uncomfortable feel And we find the wisest thing Is to snap our chest and sing For when threatened with mutes, And your heart is in your boots There is nothing brings it round Like the trumpet's martial sound Like the trumpet's martial sound Becoming an ex-pirate. The Pirate King and Ruth, my nursemaid. Here we have a piece of news for you, my lad. Uh, tell him, Ruth. Well, Frederick, it seems that you were born on the 29th of February, in a leap year. But I have just reached my 21st year. Yes, but you were apprenticed to us until your 21st birthday, which will occur early in 1980. My goodness. That means I'm about five years old. I don't feel five years old, especially when I look at you, Mabel. Don't go back to the pirates, Frederick. Will you wait for me, Mabel, until 1980? He loves me. He is here. Farewell, Mabel. Oh, Father, what shall we do? We shall lead our fleet force against the pirates, daughter, even though Frederick is now our foe. Oh, nasty job, policing, depriving fellow creatures of their liberty and all that. Mabel, I tell you, a policeman's lot is not a happy one. Not a happy one. When a felon's not engaged in his employment, his employment, or maturing his felonious little plan, his, plan. his capacity for innocent enjoyment, his enjoyment is just as great as any honest man. Honest man. Our feelings we with difficulty smother, his mother, when constabulary duties to be done, to be done. Oh, take one consideration with another, with another. A policeman's lot is not. Not a happy one. Oh, when constabulary duties to be done, to be done, the policeman's lot is not a happy one. Happy one. When the enterprising burglar is not a burglar, not a burglar. When the cutthroat isn't occupied in crime, I didn't crime. He 
loves to hear the little brook a gurgling, brook a gurgling, and listen to the merry village chime. When the coster's finished jumping on his mother, his mother, he loves to lie a basking in the sun, in the sun, or take one consideration with another. With another, a policeman's lot is not a happy one. Oh, when constabulary duties to be done, to be done. The policeman's lot is not a happy one. Happy one. Father, the bushes are moving. The trees are moving toward us. Shh. Frederick and the pirate. They're sneaking up on us like, like burglars in the night. Listen. General Stanley. Surrender and die? That seems a little drastic. From a sense of duty, Frederick has told us of your deceit. You are no orphan. No, but if you kill me, all my daughters will be. Silence. Prepare to die. Now, just a minute, King. Just a minute. To gain a brief advantage, you've contrived. But your proud triumph will not be long lived. Don't say you're orphan, for we know that game. On your allegiance, we've a stronger claim. We bid you yield. We bid you yield. In Queen Victoria's name. You do? We do. Yes, we bid you yield in Queen Victoria's name. We yield at once with humble mien Because with all our faults we love our queen Yes, yes, with all their faults they love their queen Away with them and place them at the bar One moment, let me tell you who we are we are no members of the common throng. We are all noblemen who have gone wrong. No Englishman on move that statement here. Because with all our faults, we love our hearts. Pardon me, ex-pirate king. Peers will be peers, and youth will have its fling. Resume your ranks and legislative duties, and take my daughters, all of whom are beauties. What a happy ending. Well, what did you expect? This is Gilbert and Sullivan. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mark Dennis and Lucille Norman will be back in just a moment. And our thanks to Paul Keith, the Pirate King, to Virginia Reese, who was Ruth, and to our entire company. Gilbert and Sullivan's Pirates of Penzance was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. You know, back in the days of World War II, I remember what a thrill it was to go home for a visit. And I know thousands of veterans will remember what it meant to save up the dollars for that trip. That's why it's good to hear that this year the railroads are again offering special reduced rates for military personnel traveling on leave during the Christmas holidays. From December 15th until January 15th, our men in uniform can make a round trip in railroad coaches for about two cents a mile. 
And now here again are our guests, Lucille Norman and Clark Dennis. Well, it was a real pleasure doing Gilbert and Sullivan with Norman and Dennis. <laughs> it was fun, Gordon. Tell me something, Gordon. Is, it re- is there really a place called Penzance? Well, there certainly is, Clark. It's a famous British seaside resort. It's, uh, well, like saying the Pirates of Palm Springs or the Pirates of Pismo Beach. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you heading next week, Major? Well, Bonnie Lass, we're heading to Scotland for the magic of the lovely musical hit Brigadoon. And Marion Bell and say, looky here, Clark Dennis will be our <laughs> guest. Well, we'll be listening. Hmm? Well, what am I saying? I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Gordon. Good night, folks. All aboard! Well, sir, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next week, goodbye. Pirates of Penzance was presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae can be seen starring in the Warner Brothers production, The West Point Story. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. And now keep tuned to your Monday night of music on NBC. Transcribed, this is NBC, the national broadcasting company.